Hello everybody and welcome to another Sketch Starters with Nicole. This time around our projects are really special because I'm going to be mixing together not only layout but color and style because this is the feature projects for this month's inspiration challenge over on the Alta New website. So let's get started and you'll see how my interpretation of this unfolds. For our first project we're going to work on a really cool background that kind of mimics the um, rocks that you see in the inspiration picture. So I'm using the warm gray um, artist marker refills and we're going to create a cool background with those. And I've got a piece of vellum cardstock here and if you have UPO paper you can use that or you can use vellum like I'm using today. And I've got this little air mover here and some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, 70% in a little spray. And then I also have some platinum embossing powder that we're going to add at the end. So you saw that I just sprayed this down with a little bit of alcohol and I'm going to start by adding in some of the light colors of the um, warm gray family. So that was morning frost and evening gray. And you can see that it's already starting to move around, which is really cool. So then I can use my little air tool here to blow the air around and get the colors to move a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I can add in more color. And every time you do this, you're going to get a different look, which is really quite neat uh, effect that you'll have with this process. So this is the lava rock, which is really dark. So I would use it sparingly. If you happen to get too much on here, you can use a lighter color inside of it. So this is the morning frost again, and you see how it's pooling that out and it will get the color to move. Now, if you're using UPO, if you get too much of the ink on the UPO, it's going to sit on top and it will end up getting kind of um, sticky. So you can use alcohol to spray and you see how that just kind of separated it all. And I'm using that to help reinvigorate the ink and move it around. And then it's also giving me that kind of texture that I would get from, a, uh, from the rocks. So I really love the way that that is all working out. And I want to spread this out far enough that I have a finished panel here that's about four and a quarter by five and a half. I am going to cut this down to a smaller size in the end. So I just want to make sure that I've got enough on here. And when I feel that I do, I'm going to take my platinum embossing powder and with a spoon, just sprinkle it in places to uh, where it's going to stick to some of this ink that's still wet. I don't want to get it everywhere, but enough that I'll have some really cool shiny spots from the embossing powder for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this with my heat tool and I'll be right back. All right, so this is my dried panel and if you use vellum like I did, you're going to notice that you're going to have some warpage. So I find the best way to combat that is to take a piece of white cardstock and add some double-sided adhesive sheets or strips to it. And if you can, use the sheets so that way you can cover the entire panel. And so now I have this whole panel of stickiness that I can put my finished alcohol sheet on. And I'll just press it down slowly here to make sure that it gets on here even without any bubbles and that's really going to help combat the warpage so you see how that's really much less warped and then it really helps the colors pop too all right so now that i have this done i can cut this down to my finished four by five and a quarter panel and i'm also going to cut out a frame here with the crystal frames dies so that way i can have my oval for the sketch all right, so here's my finished panel and I've got the die cut out. So I'm going to reinforce my die cut with some washi tape just to make sure that it doesn't pop out when I get it all down. Because you know, sometimes you don't get uh, enough adhesive on it. So if I put just a little bit of washi tape overlapping but not peeking out, that's going to help keep that element in place once I have it all glued down. So that can definitely be helpful. And the washi tape is so thin that it's not going to uh, show any lines on the other side. 
All right, so that's pretty good. I shouldn't need much more than that. And now I can go ahead and adhere this to my card base. And because there may still be just a little bit of warpage, you might want to make sure that you get glue all the way around the edges. And then, of course, a little bit of glue on your frame here so that it sticks down well. All right, so that's going to go right onto my card base. Gorgeous. So now I have this beautiful rock looking background. I mean, it could almost be um, a stone cut floor. It's so beautiful. And then I have two other elements here to finish off the project. This is the uh, congratulations sentiment from the Crystal Frames stamp set. So this one right here. So I have that heat embossed on some vellum because I didn't want to take away from this beautiful background. So I'm going to pop that down here. And then I made a little arrangement with the floral sprig stamp set. I went ahead and no line watercolored this here. And then I snipped it out, fussy cut all the way around the edges and snipped those three pieces separately to make a little arrangement and then just added some twine at the bottom for a really, really cute arrangement. And I have some foam squares on the back. So I just need to add some glue here. And I'll pop those guys right in the center here. All right, so that is our first card done. Let's take a look at a completely different way to interpret this sketch. All right, so for our second card, I'm going to be using the floral sprig stamp set and die again. And I'll be using a sentiment from this as well. So I said we would be using some more alcohol inks and we are, so we'll be using Peach Perfect and Cotton Candy. And believe it or not, this is just a regular piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound. And I have two little um, porcelain trays here and I don't mind using these because they are, um, glazed so that means that the alcohol ink isn't going to stick to them I can wash them off with just um, some soap and uh, like a I've been using the like a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser so this is um, just regular 70% isopropyl alcohol and I'm adding it into the reinker colors to um, just blend them up and kind of lighten up the color a little bit and I'm using a junky brush I can wash this brush later. I'll rinse it out in a little bit of alcohol and then um, dry it up. But I'm going to go for that circular pattern. And this is going to look kind of gross to begin with. But in the end, you're going to be like, wow, that looks pretty, pretty cool. It's a really neat technique. So this is kind of like watercoloring, right? Um, except that it dries really fast because we're using the alcohol. So this was the Peach Perfect. And now I'll go into the cotton candy and I'm just going to add in some swirls here. And it's just about making it however you want circular. Um, so this is definitely a departure, um, at least a, a, a wide interpretation of this sketch. I have the circle thing going on here. And that's going to be the background. So I'm going to do one more layer with the peach. And just like if you were using these in your markers, they do blend together. So I'll grab that peach. And you can tell I'm going back and forth with these um, brushes or with the same brush because the colors are complementary. So they're going to blend together. And I'm not really concerned about getting any kind of cross contamination. I would definitely recommend this technique with colors that are going to look good together, such as the peach and the pink. Okay, so this needs a minute or two to dry. And like I said, right now it doesn't look super stellar, but once it dries, you can see that the color really does start to come out. Um, it's just the alcohol that's really making it look kind of mottled right now. And in the end, it's gonna look really, really cool. All right, so to bring in the gray, I have a piece of real gray cardstock on my card base. And you can see that I cut down my finished piece here to uh, three and three quarters by five. 
so I've got a really big border. So I've got that peach and the pink. And if you like the back side better, of course you could use the back side. That's kind of the cool thing about using the alcohol inks is that they will bleed through. So you might end up with a really cool pattern on the back side if you like that even better. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that on the card base. And then we can go ahead and add our sentiment to that. And like I said, we'll use a sentiment from the same stamp set here. So I'll put this into my Misty. And I think I'll do the um, everything will be okay. I kind of feel like we need that these days. And I'm not gonna put it right in the center because I am going to put a sprig off to the side here like so. So I'll kind of move this off to the side a little bit. There we go. And I'm using the permanent black. All right, so I've got my sentiment on there, great. And then I can go ahead and add my sprig. Now I did uh, stamp the sprig in the same permanent black because I wanted to get a little bit of detail on there. So I used my um, artist markers. I used the limestone marker. So this is the lightest in this series shade. And then I used my colorless blender to just get some shadowing into that sprig so that way it had a little bit of depth to it but I didn't have to color it in. So and then I'm just going to go ahead and add some foam adhesive here and I think I'll add just a couple down the stem to give that some support and I am going to extend it beyond the border here. So I'll just pop these off. Okay, and then get this guy right on here. So like I said, I think I'll pop that off the border. So that looks pretty good. And then I just have this little bit here and I'm kind of glad I did it that way. So I have a piece of foam right on the edge there and I can just snip that right off. So there you go, we have two different takes on this simple sketch. And of course we used our inspiration challenge for the month of April to bring all the colors and the textures and the style into play. Of course, I'd love to see you play along with this month's inspiration challenge. So don't forget to link up your inspired projects on the Alta New Card blog and out on social media, you can add the hashtag Alta New to your projects so that you can get found by Alta New. Of course, some other hashtags that you can be using are Alta New Sketch Starters and also my hashtag PM Retreat. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I'll have another sketch for you later in the month, but until then, happy crafting. Thank you.